Here is the last black and white TV ever made. Not this specific one, of course, but this general design. I'm sure you've seen plenty of them. Even today in thrift stores, you can often find them for sale. I got this one for $1.99. This particular style of black and white TV started appearing sometime in the 1990s. For example, Radio Shack sold this very similar looking TV beginning in 1995. And by 2006, these were selling for $14.99 brand new. And I definitely remember seeing these in stores even after analog TV was shut down in 2009, which would have rendered these mostly obsolete unless you hooked it up to a VCR or just used it as a radio. Doing some research, I've been able to find over 30 different brands these TVs were sold under. Here's two of them. This one is a Spectra, and this one is a Memorex. And you can see they're very similar, but not quite exactly the same. Not just the difference in color, of course. For example, these fake vents on the side, you can see this one is slightly curved, while this one is flat. And the two CRTs you can see are slightly different colors. This one is more white and this one is more gray. You can also see differences in the tuning dials. So these were kind of like those suitcase style record players where they all basically look the same. But if you look closely you can see minor differences between them. So clearly they were not all coming from the same factory. I'm sure there were multiple different factories in China making these TVs with slight differences in the parts they used. These TVs were commonly advertised as having a five and a half inch picture tube, but the actual viewable image size is just under five inches, which is what they're supposed to advertise. But just like they didn't bother following the rules about not selling analog TVs after 2009, they also didn't bother following the rules about advertising the actual viewable image size. And these small black and white picture tubes were also commonly used in things like karaoke systems, baby monitors, and security camera systems. So the part sharing between all those different devices is what also helped to make these so cheap. This Spectra 52-BWR was made in September 2002 and this Memorex MT0550 was made in July 2005. As for the reason why people kept buying these well into the 2000s, it's mostly because they were just so dirt cheap. I mean $15, that's the kind of price where people would see one of these on the shelf in the store and they would say, hey that's kind of neat. I could bring it outside, I could take it with me camping, I could put it in my RV, I could take it to the ball game, and they probably use it once or twice, and they realize it's a piece of crap, and they put it in their closet, and they never use it again, until 20 years later when they're cleaning out their junk, and they donate to Goodwill, and that's how we end up with these. This one even still has a protective plastic film on the tuning dial. The glue holding it on started coming off so I just took off the whole thing and now you can see how cheap it is. The tuning indicator is just a strip of plastic that moves up and down to show you approximately where you tuned in. Obviously these are just continuous tuning. They don't have click stops on each channel so you gotta manually tune it in. And you get FM radio, AM radio, VHF low which is channels 2 to 6. VHF High, which is channel 7 to 13, and UHF, which goes all the way up to channel 83, even though the channels above 69 were reallocated to mobile phone service in the late 1980s. For some reason, they just kept indicating on the dial on these TVs made in the 2000s, even though there are no longer any TV stations in that region. But the ones of these that were sold in Europe only have UHF because Europe has not used VHF for TV broadcasting since the mid-1980s. And some of these have an AV input on the back with composite video and audio, but these do not. They just have an external antenna jack, which is a 3.5 millimeter jack, which was typical for portable TVs back in the 80s and 90s. 12 volt DC power input. It can also run on batteries, which I'll show you in a minute. Vertical hold control brightness and contrast and on this one these knobs are very difficult to adjust because they're larger and they're almost right up against this lip here so you don't get much finger room to get a grip on these knobs. 
On this side is the speaker, which has virtually no openings in this grill for the sound to actually come out. On this side, it's just a decoration. And here are the batteries. 10 C cells. I actually went to the dollar store and bought these. They come in a pack of two for a dollar, so I spent five dollars on batteries to power this TV. And these are only heavy-duty, non-alkaline batteries, so they won't last very long. Because these TVs draw about 12 watts when they're in operation, so they're definitely rather power-hungry on the batteries. First, let's just try using it as a radio. So I'll switch it on to the radio position. I have it set to FM. 3.9 FM. You can also listen online at WNYC.org. For the rest of this evening, we're looking at clear skies. It's going to be cold tonight, low of about 37. Sunny tomorrow, Tuesday, high near 50 in the afternoon. The FM reception on these is not bad. Bounty. The Queen. So do I say annual for important safety information. To celebrate King. PSVG Long Island. How the world connects. So it's picking up plenty of stations on FM, but AM is not nearly as good. That's the volume turned all the way up. It's passed since their last. And only a few stations are coming in strongly. The rest are barely audible. You're qualified for boosters. Yo, dot net. That's my own transmitter. That's why it's so loud. Now let's try the TV function. Obviously, we're not going to pick up anything watchable because there's no longer any analog TV of any kind on the air. I kind of wish I did this video about a year ago when there were still some low power analog TV stations on the air, but now they're all gone. Takes a while for the tube to warm up. And there you can see, just static. Some bleed over from my FM transmitter. I'm sure you don't want to just look at snow for the rest of the video. So I connected it directly to my VCR and this is the best image quality I can get. There's a line, there's some ghosting and static, and there's some buzz in the audio if I turn it up. But that's the best you're going to get. These TVs are just not very sensitive. I'll play a tape here. Plies, daytime running lights are for daytime use only. Remember to turn on your headlights at night for full power and to illuminate all other lights. And if you leave them on accidentally, a warning tone will sound to remind you to turn them off. Now, let's talk about security, Peter. Ready? Well, Callie, this is the key to using Jetta's central power locking system. It can lock or unlock the doors, rear trunk lid, and fuel filler flaps simultaneously. So that's the kind of video quality you can expect from one of these. Not very good even with a direct connection to a VCR. And when you turn off this one, it looks very old fashioned. You see that dot in the middle? Sometimes it lasts longer than others, but you definitely get that dot in the middle. Now here's the Silver Spectra TV and the image quality is noticeably superior and also has less distortion on the audio, although it has more buzz and it sounds more tinny. So I'll give you a sample of what this one looks like. yourself with a car that's full of driving excitement, intelligent engineering, and plenty of personality. Once you enjoy what Jetta's got to offer, we think you'll agree that it's unlike any other car on the road today. In fact, Volkswagen believes so much in its product, it's backed by Volkswagen Protection Plus. So that's an example of the differences between these TVs, even though they all basically look the same, they all have minor differences in their quality and performance. Some are definitely better than others. And this one also doesn't make that dot in the middle when you turn it off. I'm sure you wanted to see what these look like inside, and well, there you go. These are so cheap they don't even use screws to hold the components inside the case. So once you crack it open, the whole thing basically spills apart like this. The tube in this one was made by Dongguan CRT Manufactory. And as for how they were able to make these so cheap, that's because there's only three integrated circuits in this entire TV. Here is the CSC5151, that's the TV chip. 
basically the entire TV in a single chip. So it does the tuning, the video decoding, the sweep circuits for the CRT, everything in a single chip. And there's the chip for the radio. It's an SA2003, a completely integrated AM-FM radio tuner and a single chip. And the only other chip is an LM386 audio amplifier. I don't see any traces on the board for what could have been an AV input, but you can see some unused traces for what would have been an AC power input with rectifier diodes and a filter capacitor. The flyback transformer is a BSH-8, so I wouldn't be surprised that the high voltage on this is 8,000 volts instead of the 25,000 volts that is typical for color CRTs. And there's the tiny and tinny sounding speaker. And interestingly, there's a serviceman warning, or warring, printed into the back of the case, reminding you to ground the CRT when you're going to service this. As for when production of these ended, I'm not sure. There's still one seller on AliExpress selling a black and white portable TV that is a kit you have to put together yourself, but they only have about 58 of them left, so I'm pretty sure those are just old stock they're still selling off. As for when the last cathode ray tube televisions of any kind were made, Wikipedia claims it was in 2015, but the company they identify as the last known manufacturer of CRT TVs, Videocon in India, said in 2015 that they still had enough demand for them to continue manufacturing them for three more years. So sometime in that range after 2015 when the last CRT televisions were made. So there's a look at the last black and white TV ever made. They were an inexpensive, mass-produced novelty item whose quality ranges from poor to miserable. So even if you're a fan of black and white CRT televisions, once you see how bad the image quality actually is, even with a direct connection to a VCR or a digital TV tuner box, the novelty will quickly wear off. And you'll probably just end up donating it back to the thrift store again. If you happen to have a Jetta with power windows or a power sunroof, you also get the convenience of a closing feature built into the system. By holding the key in the locking position, your windows and sunroof will automatically close. And now that everything's locked on your Jetta, a flashing red light on the driver's door sill, and that beep you heard earlier, will tell you that your alarm is set. 